everyone. Welcome to Craft Central Designs. I'm so pleased you're here. I have for you today this so, so cute, so adorable, relatively inexpensive to make Easter Bunny decor piece made from materials from Hobby Lobby and the Dollar Tree. This one is so easy and so much fun to make. I just love it and I hope you do too. Welcome back to my current subscribers. My subscribership has increased exponentially lately and I am so appreciative and so pleased about that. Thank you. If you are not currently a subscriber, I hope you will consider becoming one and as well give this video a thumbs up and leave me your comments. I love receiving them. Okay, let me show you how I made this so cute Easter Bunny decor piece. Let's look at the items that we will need to create this piece. I have here a styrofoam egg. I believe I had purchased this on Amazon last year, but they have one exactly like that at the Dollar Tree. It's 14 inches in circumference at, at, at the widest um, area of the egg, and it's eight inches from top to bottom. I have here this beautiful yarn. I'm sure I almost squealed <laughs> in the aisle at Hobby Lobby when I found this because I was searching for something. Just I had something in mind for this piece and that was the perfect, perfect um, yarn. I guess you could call it yarn. It's like a furry yarn. I also picked up a um, furry pom-pom uh, in the aisle where the felt is at Hobby Lobby. I have your little piece of material. It's a small uh, floral print, very cute. Uh, you want small flowers for this. And you'll only need a very, very small piece, probably as little as you can possibly get, uh, get them to cut for you. I have here uh, some uh, twine that I also got in the yarn department at Hobby Lobby. I love it because it changes colors uh, as you pull it off of this skein. So it's just really, really pretty. And it picked up all those colors in that fabric. And that's the reason why I just loved it. But again, Dollar Tree, and I'm showing you right there, they have a very similar one and it's perfect. You can usually find that in the crafter's square section. We're going to be using um, some ribbon, of course, to make a very pretty bow that's going to go up by the ear of that rabbit. So I chose uh, um, multitude of colors and ribbons from my uh, ribbon stash that would pick up the colors in that fabric. So I ended up using, oh gosh, I think I used five different ribbons. That purple did not go. Uh, again, purples are, purples are hard to match, pinks are hard to match, and so are reds. So you just have to uh, hold your item up to whatever you're trying to match to establish whether it will be a, a good um, match for your piece. So I have there <laughs> a lot of ribbons. I'll show you uh, ultimately what I used, but some of them are from Hobby Lobby. A couple of them are Easter ribbons, and some of them are from the Dollar Tree. Now they do have narrow ribbons for Easter at the Dollar Tree now, so you could get your ribbons there and make this piece. I have there a foam rose from the Dollar Tree, a felt rose from the Dollar Tree, and those are some little resin flowers. I didn't end up using those, but I'm going to put something in the center of the bow. I actually ended up using the white foam rose that I had gotten at the Dollar Tree. I have some Jenga blocks there, again, from the Dollar Tree. I have four of them. I'm just gonna be gluing them together to provide a base for that, that uh, Easter Bunny. I have some pipe cleaners, which I got at Hobby Lobby. 
add a piece of white felt to create the ears. I have some craft wire, which I'm going to be using for the bows, but I'm going to be using that for the whiskers. I have a half wood round. Oh, I've had these in my uh, wood stash for probably a couple years, but I believe I got them on Amazon. And I'm going to be using two black buttons from the sewing department at Hobby Lobby for the eyes. I didn't end up using any Mod Podge, but I sure did use that finger protector. And I have here my little glue dispenser that I use for quilling. This gives you a very fine glue tip so that you can do very, uh, very thin uh, glue lines and with precision. You could find that dispenser in the uh, quilling department at Hobby Lobby. So let's get started with our styrofoam egg. And again, I was just at Dollar Tree recently and I saw an egg exactly this size. It was wrapped with some kind of colored twine, but that doesn't matter. You can pull off the, the wrapping so easily. So this yarn, I guess you could call it yarn. It was in the yarn department at Hobby Lobby. Every other week, their yarn is 30% off. Now we're going to start wrapping this egg with that fabulous furry yarn. I was so excited when I found this yarn. I absolutely love it. It's so soft and furry, just like a bunny. So it couldn't have been more perfect. So what I'm gonna do is start on the bottom and I'm going to begin wrapping that egg. I wrap it and I use hot glue in small sections as I go round and round. Now this, let's just call it a yarn, I guess, a furry yarn. It has a little backing on it, which is kind of like a little, very, very narrow little fabric. And that's what you want to adhere to the egg. I'm going to try and show you that closer in a little bit, but you'll see it if you get this um, furry yarn from Hobby Lobby. Now I do have my finger protector on. This is a good time to be wearing it. Now, when I go around um, and start gluing all of this on, with each segment that I begin, I take, you see my what I'm doing with my finger there or my thumb? I'm just taking my finger and pushing up the fur so that when I put the glue down, the, the uh, piece of the furry yarn that I'm going to be gluing down doesn't get uh, hung up in the fur that I've already adhered, if that makes sense. In plain words, when you get ready to glue on another section, push the fur up out of the way like that, what I just showed you. Very simple. And this will keep your fur from getting hot glue on it. Be sure that you you have that little piece of the, I'm going to try and show you, I think, here. I don't know if you can see it, but there's this little strip of kind of like a fabric on the back of that furry yarn. Okay, so I have it all wrapped, and look how awesome this looks. Oh my gosh, it's so perfect. And look how much I have left over. You could probably do three, at least three bunnies out of this, or just keep it for another project. But I wanted to show you that it took so little of that, that yarn. Okay, now we're gonna do the ears. Now I have one full size pipe cleaner there, and I twist the bottom just a little bit where we see my thumb, and then I shape the ear and with my fingers, I create a point at the top of the ear. See how I do that? This is very easy to make. And this just so happens, once you twist the very bottom of that pipe cleaner together, it's the perfect size for the ears for this bunny. And again, from top to bottom, that 
styrofoam egg is eight inches long. So you might wanna look for something comparable to that at the Dollar Tree. And then this size ear will fit just perfectly on that. So I'm going to take my pipe cleaners and glue it down to that piece of white felt. Now this is going to be the framework, if you will, for the ears of my bunny. I'm going to cut out that felt, that excess felt around the ear. And notice how at the bottom I have maybe like about a half an inch of pipe cleaner that doesn't have uh, the felt adhered to it. It's just kind of the ends of the pipe cleaner. That's what you're going to be sticking in the styrofoam on the head of the bunny. That's how we're going to attach the ears. All right, so we're gonna start with a little bit of glue on the ear at the base of the ear. And I'm going to start wrapping that fur around the ears. Now, every now and then I put just a little dab of glue just to keep it on track, if you will. But this is a very, very easy, quick process. I do it all the way up to the top. And then I'm showing you there again, every time you lay down a strip of that furry yarn, push the fur down before you do so. And that way you'll have a perfect application. Also be sure that your fabric backing on that furry yarn is uh, pressed, is under, is adhering to your surface of whatever you're gluing it to. In this case, it's the ears. Okay, so I still have my little pipe cleaner points at the bottom. Now what I'm going to do is create a pattern for the inserts on the ears. Now the inserts on the ears are going to be cut out from that really cute floral pat, uh, fabric, sorry, I can't speak, from that floral fabric I got at Hobby Lobby. So I make a pattern that looks to be long enough. Um, I folded it in half so it would be symmetrical, cut it out. Now you can do this trial and error if you get don't get it right the first time. Just trim a little off until you get it right. So you want that uh, that pattern to fit right inside of the ear. So now I'm going to take that pattern, take a couple of straight pins, and straight pin that that pattern right onto the fabric and cut it out. This is going to go on the inside of the bunny ears. And there you have it. I cut two of them, obviously. Now what we're going to be doing is taking some Aileen's Tacky Glue. I don't recall if I showed you Aileen's Tacky Glue in the materials segment, but I'm telling you now, Aileen's Tacky Glue. I don't really want to glue this. I don't want to risk having any um, globs of hot glue in the back of the fabric. I generally, when I'm gluing any kind of fabric, I use Aileen's Tacky Glue. Okay, so I just go around the edges of that material, that fabric, and I place it right down the center of the ear on both of those ears. And you're going to do that again for both of those. Now I have this styrofoam egg. This egg is um, eight inches in circumference, the widest part of the egg, and it's four inches from top to bottom. Now I cut the egg in half with a serrated edge knife. This is going to serve as my feet. The flat part of the feet, of the foot, <laughs> is gonna be facing outward. Now, they are just a little bit too wide. So I took out my cutting board and I have a knife there and I'm just gonna trim them down just a little bit so that my feet on my bunny are not too, too fat. And it's so easy to shape styrofoam with a knife. 
so I just kind of rounded off the any areas that I cut off just so it would have a nice rounded edge. I did that on both sides. Again, I just wanted to thin out the foot a little bit. I wanted them to be very oblong for the bunny. So I did that on both, of course. See how I just cut it more narrow? We're going to be wrapping the feet with that uh, furry yarn as well. Styrofoam is very messy. <laughs> it likes to stick to you. Okay, so when you're all done, if you just kind of roll around the styrofoam on the edges, it would just smooth right out for you. Get rid of, rid of any of those little jagged edges. Real easy by just rolling it. And this is going to be serving as the feet for our bunny. And now I'm going to begin with my finger protector on there, as you can see, wrapping that furry yarn around the foot. And as the same way that I wrapped everything else. When I get ready to put on a, any of my yarn in small segments, see how I fluff up my fur. I do that every single time. Now on this small foot, this piece that's smaller, like the foot, I'm going to um, just pretty much glue the entire uh, thing on there, as opposed to the ear, which I wrapped more so without putting so much glue. See how I fluff up the hair, get it out of the way, put my glue down, make sure my little backing is pressing to the surface of that styrofoam egg and you're going to do both of the feet exactly like that and here you have two very furry feet and you still have all of this yarn left so this yarn was I think six dollars and fifty cents with 30 percent off but look how much you have left over you have plenty for other projects which will come in very handy for Easter, if you like doing Easter decor pieces. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is create my little pads on my paws. And the, the, the largest pad is going to be oval in size. And this is just trial and error. I didn't have a pattern or uh, anything at all like that for this. I just had to kind of figure it out as I went along. So I used my scrap pieces of fabric and I want the larger oval on the bottom of the foot or toward the heel of the foot. And then three small paw pads over that larger oval. I'm gonna show you what I mean by that here. There's gonna be one directly over it in the center and then two on the side. So you're gonna just cut those out and again, trial and error, just keep cutting until you get the uh, size that you like. Now this bunny is, uh, <laughs> I'm joking when I say this, but it's like, a, I don't know, the cousin of a bunny that I did last year in the first year of my uh, YouTube channel. It was um, my most watched video, my most popular video I wrapped an egg in burlap and I designed it much the same as this one that I'm doing today but I'm changing up all of the materials and giving it a whole new look but I loved it so much the one I made last year I wanted to make another one but make it look quite different with all different textured materials so I hope you all like this one as much. This was a so super fun project. I just was in heaven making it. It was so much fun. I love doing pieces like this. All right, so you can see that I'm just kind of 
by trial and error, creating my little, once I found a size that looked like it was pretty good for those smaller ovals, I just used that as a pattern to create all the rest of them by just cutting around the pattern on the fabric. Oh, look at that, so cute. We're going to be using that same Aileen's Tacky Glue to tack those down. And I'm going to be outlining all the little pads on my paws as well as the ear inserts with that colored twine. And you'll see how I do that in just a minute, but first uh, we have to glue down those um, pads on the paws. Now remember when you glue this down, you're gluing it to the flat side of your egg. Remember when you cut the egg in half? This goes, just feel your egg. Even I know it's hard once the fur's on, but just feel it. And you put those those little paw pads, if you will, on the flat side. The rounded side is gonna be glued to the bunny. All right, now I have my quilling dispenser, glue dispenser, I love this. And it has Elmer's glue inside of it. So I'm going to go around the perimeter of all those little paw pads. And then I'm going to take the twine and outline each of those paw pads. Now this may seem a little bit tedious, but honestly, it goes really pretty quick. Don't try to do this with hot glue. You need a very, um, something that you can get the glue out of your dispenser in, in a very tiny amount. You don't wanna be getting glue in your fur of the foot. So that's why I prefer this um, dispenser. This is very handy to have. So when you're in Hobby Lobby next time, just look in the quilling department. It's possible you could get this on Amazon. I know Amazon carries quilling papers, so they might uh, also have this dispenser because this is what you use when you do quilling which is one of my, oh, love, love, love quilling. Okay, so you see how I outlined that oval pad? You're gonna do that same thing for all of the pads on both feet. Now, um, my particular uh, twine that I used, um, it has a multitude of colors, as you can see on that on that bundle of twine there. So I wanted to mix up my colors because my fabric has a lot of different colors in it. So I wanted to just uh, outline my, my paws with just as many colors as I could pick up in those uh, paw pads. Now we're gonna do the ear, the same thing. I'm gonna go around with my glue dispenser in sections. And I'm going to outline the insert in the ear. And this really finishes off the piece very nicely. Especially if you use a fabric that has any fraying at all. This particular one didn't. I believe I did mention that I got this at uh, Hobby Lobby in the fabric department. This is a very, um, very colorful spring um, floral pattern. I thought it was so pretty for this piece. Now when I do my bow, I looked at the fabric and I chose as many colors as I had uh, available to me from the colors in that fabric. So we're just gonna go completely around the perimeter of that piece of fabric. And that's really going to create a very 
a pretty look for that ear. Now I have four Jenga blocks here from the Dollar Tree. You can use wood glue if you like. I just used a tacky glue. All this is doing is serving um, as a base so that my egg will stand up straight. I'll just be gluing it to that. I believe the egg at Dollar Tree, in fact, I'm positive, actually had a little bit of a flat bottom, so you wouldn't even have to uh, do this step if you picked up that egg from the Dollar Tree. Now, if the egg is a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller, you'll have to uh, keep that in mind when you create your ears and your feet, just so that it, you know, it looks, um, it doesn't look too unbalanced. So I have my half wood round here, and when I paint just one little thing like that, I just put a piece of masking tape around my finger and I pop the, the half wood round right on top of it and it enables me to get all around, right down to the very bottom edge with my paintbrush. I believe I put two coats on that just to get a nice pink color. And if you do the, Jeng the Jenga blocks or the tumbling tower blocks, whatever you want to call them, um, I used plaster uh, Waverly chalk paint because it was kind of a little bit of an off-white, which was um, a good match for my uh, furry yarn. Okay, so I cut three long, long pieces of black craft wire and I took another piece of wire and just uh, secured those all together in the middle. Now you can always trim these down if they're too long once you get it on the rabbit's nose. But I did uh, three pieces, so I would have three whiskers on each side. I'm going to um, be hot gluing that right to the half wood round nose that I have for the bunny. Okay, so we are now going to place the bunny on its little platform. It's going to have it sit up properly. Just gonna place that right down on there and now now I'll be able to assemble uh, everything onto uh, my rabbit so I'm going to go ahead and put the nose and the whiskers together very easy I just glue it to the back of that half wood round and I'm going to use my spatula here to press that down and hold it. I wait until I get the uh, whiskers on my bunny before I attempt to um, trim them up. The last thing that I did on my bunny, and I don't think I showed it, was I took a paintbrush dipped it in a little bit of white paint and I just dry brushed most of the paint off and I put a little bit of a white shine over the nose of that um, rabbit. It's up to you, you can do it or not do it. Okay, now I'm gonna be creating a bow and um, I'm going to just be doing two loops on each side this time on my bow as opposed to most of my other bows, which are usually three loops. Now this is a little bit wider. I believe it's 5 8 inch. This is actually a, an Easter ribbon. It has little Easter eggs on it. I, I'm thinking I got that at Dollar Tree last, last year, but it's super pretty and it will pick up all the colors in uh, that fabric that I used. I thought it was such a cute touch uh, on this bunny. So 
as I mentioned before, I looked at the fabric and pulled as many ribbons as I had that would coordinate well with, with that, um, with the fabric. So again, I'm just creating two loops on each side. The usual method that I use, I fold over my loop. Now I wanna say these loops are about three and a half inches long. I don't want the bow too big to overpower the uh, bunny. <laughs> I don't want it to be too big and, and cumbersome on the head. So I fold over my loops, pinch it in the middle, twist the ribbon, fold it over, pinch it in the middle, twist the ribbon. As you can see, that's what I'm doing there. And there's tier number two. My next one, I'm using this, um, it's kind of an aqua color. There is a little bit of aqua color in that fabric. So I wanted to bring that out. You see how I mixed up my colors to really um, coordinate with my fabric, really bring out all the colors in the fabric. And again, I, I'm sure I mentioned it, but when you choose a fabric, choose one that has very small flowers so that the fabric on the uh, ear inserts and on the paws, uh, you can actually see some of the flowers because if you use a larger print, you're not gonna be able to um, define the little flowers in there if it's a bigger one, okay? All right, so um, next, I have a kind of a, a pretty uh, minty green. I think it's a polka dot, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it's a polka dot. I think that was a, a, a Michael's ribbon. Two loops on each side, twist, fold it over, pinch it with my thumb and my index finger, twist it, fold it over. I always do my bows that way. Tails ending up on one side. Again, this uh, goes beautifully with uh, the flowers in that fabric print. I'm using a craft wire there just to secure my loops. I'm going to be stacking those against one another to create a bow. I have here a little gingham check and I believe that one was a Hobby Lobby ribbon. I thought it would be fun to mix in uh, some different prints. So I have polka dots, gingham check. Uh, I have some little Easter eggs, and I have that ribbon that has the little stitching look going down the side. I have a couple of ribbons with pinks. I didn't have any purple, which I, again, purples are very hard to match, but I didn't happen to have a purple one. That would have been the only additional one I would have liked to have had for this because you can really see the purple in that fabric. It would have been nice to have that. See, I was trying, but that purple just didn't go. I have here my pink. I think I decided to use this um, polka dot. I did. That's a Michaels ribbon. I think that might have been the final ribbon that I used. So I had, what, one, two, three, four, five, maybe six different ribbons. So that really added a lot of visual interest to the piece and lots of color. All the little details in a piece like this make such a difference. Sometimes they take a few extra minutes or you know, a little bit of, um, you know, gluing or waiting for things to dry or, you know, just maybe something very tedious. But I never pass by those little details when I know they're going to be fabulous on the piece. I'm very patient. I'm a very patient crafter. All right, so I have my, I'm gonna start stacking my uh, bows. 
So I have the Easter egg on the bottom, the gingham check on top of that. By the way, for my little pieces of wire in the back, any tails I had, I snipped those off because I want those uh, bows to be very firmly um, adhered to one another, very flush. So I added the um, soft uh, aqua, the pink, and the minty green on top of that. So pretty. Look at all those springy colors. You know, I think that I decided to leave off that pink one with the white polka dots. Yeah, I did. I think I decided at this point that I had enough. <laughs> Don't you think? <laughs> but so pretty. That bow is so, so pretty. All those beautiful colors. So now I'm just, you know, straightening out my loops which takes a little bit. Now I do have long tails on there, which I will tend to those later. Now we're going to put the feet on. Now, when I put my feet on, I tilt each one a little bit to the side. I don't put them on straight up and down. The way my bunny's sitting, his feet are pointing outward. So I put a good amount of hot glue on there I press the foot up, make sure I have it placed properly the way I want it. Hold it there until it has a little opportunity to dry and adhere a little bit. And then I put on the other one. Now be very careful before you press it on that you know exactly where you want to put it because you don't want to have to pull that off of that fur. You want to get it right the first time is what I'm trying to say. So, you know, really be careful that you're placing it properly. So my right foot is tilted outward and my left foot is tilted outward on my bunny. And this creates a very, very cute look for this bunny. Look how cute that is. So next I'm going to take the nose and right about midway, right down the center, I'm going to hot glue on the nose. And I arrange my whiskers. It's getting cuter by the moment. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, so I have these little black buttons that I had gotten at Hobby Lobby. They're actually like little covered buttons. And they're small. But I liked the eyes small. I tried bigger ones. I didn't care for it. So I just put some hot glue on the back of my buttons and I place the buttons uh, on the face of the bunny. If you guys, any of you, feel like you would like uh, to do this in a burlap, uh, if you go to my list of videos, you will see um, my burlap bunny. It's one of the, I don't, maybe, um, I'm not sure. It, I did it about halfway through the year, so it's probably in the middle of the list. Okay, so I took a, a screwdriver and I just inserted the screwdriver a little bit into the styrofoam on the head and created a little bit of a hole so I can stick the pipe cleaners ends that I left on those ears and stick it down in the hole. I put a blob of glue, 
held the ears in and they're already up inside of there. I thought I showed you that, but I'm just telling you, it's very easy. Take a, a screwdriver with a very small head, poke a hole for each of the ears, put some hot glue, stick it down in there, hold it till it dries. I took one of my bunny ears and folded it over, gave it a cute little curl on the ear. I think that's an awesome look for this bunny. You see how I folded it over, the one on the uh, right side. All right, now I'm going to, I put that little foam rose uh, on that bow. I decided on the white foam rose from Dollar Tree. I'm going to put some glue on the back of that bow. Now I place it on the left ear, not quite in front of the ear, slightly off to the side. Now, as you can see, we have tails going everywhere. <laughs> this is where I start arranging the tails, arranging my little bow loops, because I don't want anything covering up the eyes of the bunny. So I'm just gonna take a few minutes, pull my tails down, position the loops on the head, Anything I need to adjust, I can do so with a dab of hot glue. And I glue down the tail. And now our bunny has a tail and a beautiful embellishment on the head. And oh my gosh, how cute is this? I hope you love this one, and I hope you feel inspired to make it. It is so, so, so cute. A lot of detail, but so worth the time. Let me know what you think of this one. And if you're not currently a subscriber, I hope you will become one. Leave me your comments. I love receiving them. There's the little bunny tail back there. <laughs> so cute. Okay. Until next time, you all take care.